My butt says this car is seriously fast. <laughs> When Porsche South Africa give you a call and ask if you'd like to have a go in a GT2 RS, the simple answer is yes please. I know what you're thinking, this isn't exactly a new car, but it's also the fastest production series 911 ever produced. A product that's designed and developed around one word, performance. So let's talk about performance. Now the GT2 makes use of the previous 911 Turbo S's 3.8 litre twin turbocharged engine. But what Porsche engineers thought was, I think it needs two bigger turbochargers and a better cooling system. Let's also make it rear wheel drive, so it's really leery. The result is 515 kilowatts, 750 newton meters of torque in a car that weighs less than 1500 kilograms. And the results, it's pretty crazy. So I alluded to the weight of this product earlier. Now, the Porsche engineers obviously go to great lengths to remove weight from the GT products, but this one goes a step further because it's fitted with the optional Visac package. Now that includes exposed carbon for the rear wing, the air intakes, the roof, and the bonnet. It also extends to the interior where we've got a titanium roll cage, and this car is also fitted with the magnesium wheels. Now to put these performance figures and indeed its weight into perspective, if we compare this GT2 RS to the latest M3 and M4 from BMW, it produces a Polo GTI's worth of power more than an M4 and an M3, while weighing 250 kilograms less than those products. Now, that is equated to a lap time of six minutes and 47 seconds around the Nürburgring. To put that into perspective, that is a minute and three seconds faster than the upcoming eighth generation of the Volkswagen Golf. Just sit for a minute and think. That's how long it takes for a Golf R to complete the Nürburgring versus this car. It's crazy. So as I alluded to in the introduction, this is by no means a new car. In fact, if you're in the market for a GT2 RS, you can only get one used now. In fact, I checked Auto Trader this morning and there were five for sale. So if you've got 5.5 to 6 million Rand burning a hole in your pocket, I highly recommend it. Now, why do we have this car on test, aside from the obvious? The fact is, the internal combustion engine is on its way out. As sad as it is, I have to say that most automotive manufacturers have committed to an all-electric future. But Porsche isn't one of those manufacturers. In fact, from 2022 onwards, they committed to producing biofuels, which they claim will be nearly as clean as driving an EV, meaning that you can continue driving your internal combustion-powered Porsche products into the future. So there'll be more GT2s and more GT3s and more Cayman GT4s. And I don't know about you, but that makes me very, very happy as a petrol head. <sighs> so this is the part of the video I was most looking forward to, guys. This is where I was going to take you through what a launch control looks like and feels like in the fastest series production 911 in history. But I can't because it's just started raining. Murphy's Law, as they say. So I thought, let me take you through some of the performance stats of the GT2 RS. We'll get from zero to 100 on a dry surface, of course, 
in 2.8 seconds and onto a top speed of 338 kilometers an hour. Now, one of the main reasons why I can't take you guys through a launch control procedure is because this car ships as standard with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2R tires. That makes him super sticky in the dry, but absolutely diabolical in wet conditions like we're managing today. So I'm just gonna navigate my way home safely, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. so much trouble if I had one of these cars. I'll just do that at every traffic light. You on your way home from work? Bah, launch control.